All right, it's been a bit, but here I have a Motura Champions C39. Uh, I haven't gutted this lock before, and I'm really curious about um, one thing in this lock. It has a magnetic element here at the front, uh, and there's a magnet in the key, but I'm told that uh, the pin in there is also magnetic, so it should be attracted to anything metal. Um, and I've picked this, and normally I pick with the Bible side up, but I was told that for that magnetic element to have any effect, you need to pick it Bible side down. I think that supposedly this magnet pulls the pin up uh, and um, st stops it from block blocking the shear line. Uh, I think it has one, two, three, four, five, six pins down the, the right side of the um, keyway here. And then it's got these like mathematical shapes on here. Um, I think in other locks um, like the C55, I think those were passive pins. Uh, but we'll go ahead and, and pick this guy and then we'll try to gut it. Uh, hopefully I have enough equipment for gutting down here. So I have this uh, multi-pick VMS09 uh, just whatever Z tensioner you can find and I'll put that down there and I think maybe somehow this tensioner interacts with ma the magnetic pin maybe it's on the left side I don't know I haven't en I haven't encountered it at all um, and then I have this uh, Elite G Pro 03 from Multipick um, that I'll be using and uh, yeah so the first one here I feel it, it's like a uh, tiny jiggle right off the start so that's probably our no lift or a no lift. Uh, two is uh, springy, three is springy, uh, four is binding. So we'll go ahead and push on four if I can. There we go. Click out of four. See if I feel. All right, six feels like it's binding. Click out of six. A little bit of plug rotation, and now pulling back out. Five is binding. Let's get on five. Click, and we dropped into a pretty big false set. So again, one is still jiggly. Uh, two is binding. Two is giving counter rotation. Let's try to get that to set without dropping anything. Getting my pick a little stuck. It's pretty high, pretty high lift. This guy. There we go. Two is uh, set, and three is binding, and also counter rotating. Try to set this without dropping anything. Oh, it's really high, and we're open. So not a difficult pick. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look inside. I'm curious to see about that magnetic pin. So lock it up there. Pull that out. Get ourselves some autofocus here. There we go. And here I have some pinning, uh, well, gutting stuff. Let's start by removing the C-clip on the back. I've cut it in half. I sold the other half uh, to somebody. And... Okay, oh, there we go. I was going to say this clip doesn't come off like usual, but I guess it does. Come on. There we go. Clips off. It's usually the hardest part. Um, and usually when approaching a lock I know nothing about, it's always smart to try to shim. Uh, I don't want to go left or right. I'll go that way. I don't know. Uh, it has a little gap around here for the for the C-clip. Stuff could drop into there, stuff can drop all over, so it's first time you're approaching a lock. Every time, usually, you should use a shim, but once you get to know a lock, maybe you realize that you can get away without it. But it's always safer to use a shim. So let's see. I'm gonna put my fingers all around the plug because I don't know what's gonna fall out from one direct what direction, like the C43 and the C55 both had stuff falling out everywhere. And hopefully this C39 being a lower uh, ranked lock won't have as much junk falling out everywhere. So let's see. Um, on the bottom we have, looks like a pin there, a pin there. And I don't know what this stuff in the middle is. It's like little minus signs. Maybe that's the passive pins. We'll see when we go there. But let's see if we can drop some stuff out the bottom here. Okay, there's pin number five. Um, looks like a normal pin with a spike on it or something. So that's a uh, passive five on the bottom there. Four had a three. So these all have like a, oh, that one has like a 
a plus sign on the top. Let's see this one. So it has like a minus sign on the top or a divide sign, whatever. And these ones have lines on the bottom, whereas that one, uh, I, I, don't, I don't understand the rhyme or reason for a lot of these things. Uh, these passive pins, another one with like a, a slash on the top. And then the first one uh, looks a lot like the, the fifth one. So those are our five passive pins. Let's see, anything on this side of the lock? Well, maybe. So the side of the lock also has, looks like three passive pins and then two empty empties. Mm, let's pull the key out. And we'll, we'll get to those after because they don't they don't seem to want to fall out. Alright, something fell out here. Oh, something fell out there. Alright, so that's number five from the side. And it looks like uh, I had number four um, got stuck to my finger with sweat or something. Oh no, it's, four, it's number five. There's uh, pin number five there. I might scoot everything over. Mm, let's see. Top pins I'll put here. One, two, three, four, five, like this. So that'll be my fifth top pin. Uh, let's see. First top pin. Come on. First top pin. Second top pin. I guess these are being held in with grease. Oh, we just lost another side pin. That's the first side pin. And the third side pin will fall out at some point, probably. There's the second top pin. Okay, it's got a, a like a mushroom. So if you overset, that could be an issue with the third one. The third one was a really high set, so I don't, <laughs> I don't see over. Oh, the second one. Sorry, the second one was really high set. I don't see oversetting that or the third one. Those were like max lifts or something. Let's see. Let's look at the key. Um, so first one was uh, basically no lift, second one was almost max, third one was max, so yeah, we, we definitely experienced that uh, in the pick. Alright, the fourth pin is another standard here, standard key pin, and the sixth pin, another standard key pin here, and then I think we're just missing that, that third, there we go, third, third passive side pin here. So these are the side pin, uh, bottom pins, one, two, three, four, five, side pins, one, nothing, three, nothing, five, and then the, the top pins. Um, looks like two drill protection uh, rods there. It looks like some construction king holes here that I had no uh, construction bidding here. All right, something bi viable. Hopefully we'll run into the magnetic pin in here. I don't see where it would be. Let's take this shim out. All right, pin one on the Bible, it's just a standard. Pin two is a spool, we felt that. Uh, see, nothing special spool, it's uh, the same either direction. Like if you put it in upside down, it should be fine. Uh, it has no upside down, rather. Third one is also spool, but like in a brass color. In other words, the rest are all this kind of uh, steel color. Probably like nickel coated, um, nickel coated brass pins is my guess, or something like that. All right, pin four is a standard. Pin five, we're getting pretty far back here. Is a standard. And then pin, huh? oh, huh? uh oh, that is, oh, all right. That's pin. This is six or something because there's spring six, and then I can see down in there there's something in five. There's something in five, okay. And it sticks to it, sticks to this in the world. Ooh, oh, okay. So the, the pin itself, like they like people were telling me, is magnetic. It sticks right there to, to pin five. Um, I did remember setting pin five. So, uh, how does this work? Um, this would be together like that. It had no spring. So if I put that in chamber five, it sits like that. 
uh, it barely sticks into the keyway. Let's get a little closer in on this. So it barely sticks into the keyway and that will block you from opening. When I go to pick it, oh, is it attracted to the other side of the plug usually? All right, we're gonna try this guy, this guy out on his own. Oh wait, something just fell out again. Where'd that fall out from? Where did... I might have to look at the video to see where that, that just that just fell out from somewhere. Uh, oh no, wait, look at that. That goes all the way down. Uh-oh. Let's see if I can get it back out again. Nope, it can't. So I'm gonna have to take a magnet or something. So I, I don't know what's going on here. Oh, it's coming. There we go. So I got five out. Uh, I'm guessing that this probably came out of chamber five as well, but how did it come out after I stuck that in? I had already put that in. How did... I am confused. Let's say it was in there. Let's say it was in chamber five, and then I put this in here. Okay. So now, that could definitely block... Oh, how... Uh, how, this is brass. How is it attracted? It's not attracted. I don't know enough about the physics of magnetism, but when I had this in here, uh, oh my gosh, this is going to be a mess. It grabbed pin two. All right, so when I had this, when I picked it up out of number five, it brought the brass pin with it for, and then dropped it. You can maybe hear it. Let me try it again. You hear that? It drops the brass pin. Very. It's probably the movement of that in the chamber somehow creates a, what is it, eddy currents in the brass? I don't know causes that. That's interesting. So if this were in chamber five, sorry, chamber five. Hmm? Oh, wait, that's not, that's the side chamber. One, two, three, four, five. There's no sixth. No, that's the bottom. Oh my gosh, I'm so out of it. So if I put in this in the Oh, <laughs> it's like the C43. You can't have the top pins without the bottom. It just falls straight through. So if I have the fifth bottom pin in here, like so, and I have the fifth top pin in here, like that, and then I load the magnet in chamber five. Did I already do that? Sorry, this is uh, being a bit of a mess of a video, but I'm exploring. All right, so the magnet didn't go in number five, so it's gotta be stuck here somewhere. It's not on pin five. So I've gone and lost the magnet somewhere. That might need a video review. There's the brass piece. And I don't know where the magnet is. I was gonna test this out. I was gonna put just pin five in and try picking just pin five, but I can't do that without the magnet, and I might need to review the video to find the magnet. Oh, here it is, it's stuck to the shim. All right, never mind. We can we can proceed. All right, so pin five on the top, pin five on the bottom, and I should have done this first. Load the brass guy in chamber five, and then the magnet. I don't. Oh, it doesn't stick to my tweezers. Good, I forgot non-magnetic tweezers. Very good in number five there we go and then we'll load it up uh, this is where shim might be helpful but we'll go ahead and load it up like this and lock it up all right it's not oh it is locked okay so it does lock all right and if I put it uh, US style, it's still locked. 
So I don't know if you have to be in your style for that. Oh, it unlocked for a second there. Oh, I see. If I push it forward, it unlocks. How does it not lock it in the forward to backwards, but, but it does lock it in the side to side? Unless it's the passive? No, it's not. I have questions. What we'll do is we'll, we'll I want to I want to put some tension on it, but it's very hard, very finicky to keep it locked. It's locked there, and if I try to turn it with my fingernail, and then come in through the back and push on that pin a little. Nope. Alright, well, in any case, you saw how it worked. I don't want to fiddle around much longer. I probably wasted like 10 minutes of time. Um, but that is the Matura Champions C39. I'll play with it more off camera. It's kind of interesting. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching and catch you guys later. Bye.